During his visit to uh, India last month, Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh proposed concluding a bilateral economic and technology cooperation agreement by next year. While we commence negotiations for such a landmark agreement, the stress laid by the Prime Minister in boosting uh, cooperation in technology reflects the importance Sri Lanka attaches to harness the fruits of the state of art technologies and the constantly expanding frontiers of research and development. I think uh, this economic uh, and technology cooperation agreement would be a unique agreement encompassing cooperation in the economic and commercial field as well as in technology and research. As you are aware, among the first free trade agreements that India signed, or for that matter Sri Lanka signed, were with each other and came into effect in the earlier part of the last decade. And since then, our economic cooperation, our trade has gone up 10 times, both exports and imports. And now, the time has come, in fact, the time had come earlier to raise our economic cooperation to the next level, to include investments and services. And that is why in 2008, both the governments negotiated what is called the SIPA, the Comprehensive Economic Promotion Agreement. And in that, there were specific clauses which would promote greater interaction, economic and commercial interaction. But there has been so much disinformation or misinformation spread about that, that SIPA has now become a dirty word. However, I might like to say that I mean, when I came here, I was amused to read reports, uh, and they came out recently again, about how a large number of Indians would come to Sri Lanka, Indian barbers, uh, Indian lawyers, Indian whatever, you name it, Indian professors perhaps also, would come uh, and take over Sri Lanka. And I was very amused by the fact because this was completely untrue. And what surprised me most was that there has been no empirical research or no attempt to lay the, the proper facts before the people here. But more importantly, I checked up the drafts of the SIPA that were negotiated. And I just thought I would mention this to you, that under those drafts which were negotiated but not signed, only two areas where Sri Lanka was opening up to India. One was on computer and computer-related services for train the trainers. And the second was in the marine sector, in the shipbuilding, ship, ship repair sector, where uh, certain people of requirement that Sri Lanka required, certain professions would come. Only two areas that were supposed to be opened up, while India would open up 20 professions initially. Uh, and expand that list later. So this is, I'm, I'm mentioning this in some detail because it clearly shows the lack of knowledge, the lack of research, and the uh, willful spread of disinformation can actually cause a lot of harm and can create doubts in the, in, in, in the, name, in the, in the minds of people here. And that is why I feel it is important there are, that there be institutions that do proper research that do empirical research and come up with the true facts because for political or reasons or otherwise, there is a lot of disinformation being spread in the name of research or in the name of uh, uh, bringing uh, transparency to what is happening uh, to the people or to what's happening in the country.